Greetings, it's Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another Java tutorial to help you get an A in your course or core exam. And today we're here with how to play a playlist of music using Java. So what do I mean by a playlist? Well, you know on YouTube, you can have playlists, and they contain multiple videos, usually. And once you finish go playing one video, the next video will start, and so on. We're going to be doing that, but with music. In particular, WAV files, because this method only works for WAV files. So let's get right into it. Firstly, you need to import these six libraries because we're going to be using them to play a playlist. And then if you're in NetBeans, you can right click on your project, go to properties, go to sources, and this is going to be your project folder. I've stored my WAV files in the project folder, so I can just reference the file name. You can put these wherever you want, but make sure you get the file path correct and get all the subfolders correct if you don't put them here. It's going to be a bit different for other IDEs to find where this folder is. Now in our main method, we're going to do list string music to play equals new array list string. So we're going to be creating a list and it's going to store the file paths of all the music we want to play. And we are then going to do music play add and then we're just going to do that to add all of the strings which are file paths for the web files we want to play. Now before we start looping through this we need to make a function to play the music. So we're going to make a function. Now click the eye up in the corner if you want to know how to play music in Java because this function is going to look basically identical to the one in this tutorial with a slight difference but I'm going to go for everything don't worry. So we're going to do public static clip play music string location. So basically, we're going to be playing music and this string location is going to be the file path we want to play. But we've got clip here instead of void. Basically, when we play the music, we want to send that clip to wherever we called the play music function. So that part of the code has access to this clip because we're going to need it to track how much of the clip has been played so we can determine when we can play the next sound. So that's how we're going to return a clip. We're going to have a try catch statement. Try catch exception e, system adult the print line e. That's pretty standard stuff because we want to print out the error if there is one. And then we do a return null because if the try code fails, something went wrong, we want to return null because there's nothing to return. Inside for try code, this is a bit of code, but we're going to go through it all, don't worry. We're going to do file music path equals new file location. This is creating a file object so we can interact with the music file. And we make this file object based on the file location that of our file that we want to interact with. Then we do if music path dot exists. We want to make sure there is actually a file for this file object. So we can check if this file actually exists. If it does exist, we've got audio to play. If it doesn't, we do system dot print line can't find file. If the music path exists, we do audio input stream audio input equals audio system dot get audio input stream music path. That's a mouthful. We pass in the file the file that we made just a moment ago. And audio input stream is going to be the thing that feeds the music to our clip and our clip is going to play the music. So we do clip clip equals audio system dot get clip. We're setting up our clip object. Then we do clip dot open audio input. So we're passing in that audio into the clip. Then we do clip dot start. That's going to start the clip telling it to start playing. Then we do return clip. Since clip.start, uh, it plays music on a daemon thread, which is like a low priority thread. It's separate to the main thread. Therefore, this return clip will occur right after this starts. And that's basically it for the play music part. So we need to scroll back up to our main method. And we are going to do another try catch statement. So we could do a bunch of, we could do other things like some null checks or maybe some throws. But I'm just going to do a try catch to keep it simple. This is a simple tutorial, which then we can expand upon in the future. So I'm just going to do a try catch exception E and system out the print line E. Inside for try, we are then going to do a for int i equals zero, i less than music to play dot size and i plus plus. We're basically going to create a for loop that's going to loop through each element of this music to play list that we have. So we're going to loop through every single sound we want to play. Inside, we're going to do a few lines of code. We're going to do system dot print line plain plus music to play dot get i. So we're going to print out what file we're playing just to let the user know. Then we do clip current clip equals music player. We do clip current clip equals play music music to play dot get i. 
We're calling the play music function created before, and we're going to pass in the current music file that we want to play, because we're going to be doing a for loop, so we're going to loop for each one. So we can do music to play dot get i to get the right sound from here to play. And play music obviously accepts a file path, which we're going to be given to it. And we need to create a clip object because we need to actually track the progress of this clip and how, and how far into it we are. And I'll show you why in a second. Then we're going to do an empty while loop. And this is a very simple way of basically pausing until the music has finished. Because we don't want to play every clip at the same time because it's an asynchronous task. We want to play a clip, wait for the next clip, and then once that current clip has stopped, we then play the next clip. So we could do while current clip dot get microseconds length, which is getting the length of this clip or the music file. So if it's one minute long, it would be one minute, but in a different unit of measurement. And then we do not equals current clip dot get microsecond position. So this is getting the length and this is getting the current time position we are in the clip. Let's say we were 30 seconds into a clip, this would then be equal to 30 seconds, even though this isn't measured in seconds, it's microseconds. And basically, we're going to keep looping through while the microsecond position is not equal to microsecond length. However, when we finish the song, the clip's microsecond position will be equal to the microsecond length. Therefore, this while loop gets terminated, and then we can move on to the next iteration of this for loop, and repeat the whole thing until we've gone through every single element of this list. And that's basically it for this tutorial. So we're going to save and hit play. And as you can see, it played all of the sounds. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials on how we can expand upon this code to make cooler playlists. Thanks for being a great audience.